Okay. We got Becky in the building. Um, welcome. I appreciate you coming on the show, uh, Damian Powers. <laughs> Thank you for coming. I really, I really uh, appreciate the fact that you took the time out your day to come sit down with me and uh, discuss your life, really. Yeah, it'll be uh, interesting. There's a, a lot of shit going on in that right now. So Yeah, man. So for those people who don't know, you are a um, television star. Uh, from a uh, hit series, a hit Netflix series called Love is Blind, mainly uh, the first, the, well, you were on the first season only. Yeah. 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 And then um, and then you have a new show coming out, or that has came out already called The Perfect Match. Yes. Running them back. <laughs> right. Tell us about The uh, Perfect Match. What is that about? Uh, yeah, so The Perfect Match is a, it's a, it's a new concept dating reality TV show. It brings mm -hmm. all of... Uh, they say the best um, single reality TV stars in the Netflix universe together. To yeah. Date, to date. And um, I mean, I don't, I don't know if that's completely true. I'm on there, but uh. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, uh, I saw like they, they, it's a Netflix universe. Yeah. You know, like how Marvel has its own universe, like the yeah. Avengers. This is like the Avengers show of all the sh Netflix shows. Yeah, I mean, is, we got everybody from Too Hot to Handle, Love is Blind, The Circle, the circle. 20 something, Sexy Beast, mm -hmm. Circle France, yeah. uh, The Mole. So we have like literally like all these singles from these shows coming together to like say, hey, like, is our perfect match somebody else in our realm? Like, right. right. Is, is there, is there, is, it, oh, yeah. is our perfect match in the Netflix universe? You right. Know I mean? Cause obviously all y'all kind of came together to find a, a match. Yeah. So it's like, it's, yeah. it's good to have all y'all in the same place. Uh, yeah. And I watched the show last night. I finished watching the show last night. Uh, well, right. the first four episodes and it's to me, I, and I'm not even a reality TV. I'm not even saying this for the cameras. Like I was genuinely uh, entertained. Oh, well, you finished the first four? Episodes? Yeah, for, I finished the first four episodes. How was that cliffhanger? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was pretty good, man. Um, yeah, I was genuinely, I was like, damn, this is a good show. And, and the concept behind it is kind of, like, interesting, like, the games behind it. And I don't know, I enjoyed it. I yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah, it's, it, it's wild. But I, I will say this. Uh, uh, the next the next batch of episodes are going to get really, really fucking crazy. Yeah. We're about to stir some shit up. Oh, nice. <clears throat> nice. That's what you're known to do. <laughs> um so yeah i wanted to get back into like like so I know you were on love is blind but before i want to talk about who you were before love is blind like what kind of stuff like wh who were you like what kind of did you have like jobs did i have like did i have like jobs uh i had a lot of jobs yeah, yeah. well who were you before the show uh, I know that's a pretty general uh, general question, but yeah, I actually had a really private life. Uh, I mean, I mean, obviously, going from you know regular life to reality TV, mm -hmm. you know, your your shit's bound to get exposed. You're bound to be like under microscopes when you go out and do things, uh, right? But yeah, before I was a uh, was a happy kid. You know? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're like What's now that? is uh, where do I go to work? <laughs> you know, I had that. Uh, that uh, it wasn't a nine to five job. It was more like six a.m. to like nine p.m. But right. uh, I was uh, I was grinding, man. I was uh, setting up for things, and you know, this sort of fell in my lap like unexpectedly and ran with it. But um, yeah, I think I had twenty four W two jobs by the age of twenty five. Damn. Yeah. So you were just doing everything. Yeah. And, and it wasn't like, oh, you can't hold a job. You can't hold a job. Like if yeah. an opportunity came up and I was like, I don't see my like my first job. Like what was I, your first job? OK, well, I mean, we get into first jobs. It's like Mine was first job making money. You know what I mean? I was selling, yeah, yeah. I was selling candy bars on the school bus to pay for Oh, the nice, trip, nice. So. Nice little hustle. Yeah. I can know. respect that. No, I, was, I can I respect that. I was. And I was like, you know, there's like this field trip I wanted to go on and you know, we weren't like a wealthy family. So mm. like, you know, I had like 20 bucks in my savings that I'd saved all year. Mm. And, uh, we went to, uh, maybe it was like Costco or Sam's Club. And I saw, right. I saw a pack of 30 yeah. candy bars. Sour there. Patches, Capri Suns. Yeah, but this was like. You yeah. name it. Like three musketeers, Hershey, mm -hmm. Reese cups, and airheads. Yeah, and it was like Woo. thirty to a pack, and I was like, and it was only like it was only like twelve bucks. Yeah, I was like, I was like man, I could hustle this. Yeah, and selling I candy, a dollar a pop. Yep, I make an eighteen dollar profit. I can go back and buy another box and another box, and then I just keep amplifying it. Bro, keep, I, I was the legit like candy man in my high school. Yeah. I was the candy man. I would bring duffel bags <laughs> to school full of candy, ice pack on the bottom to cool the drinks. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, yeah I, like, I like that you had a hustler uh, mentality, that hustler's ambition yeah. at an early age. I bought a tech deck repair kit. And I was repair- oh, tech decks, yeah. the skateboards. Yeah, the little skateboards. Oh, fuck. I'm nice deck. with the tech decks. Yeah, I bought like a like a high end after the candy bar business took off. I opened up a tech deck repair shop on the school bus, you know? Okay. I was fixing people's tech decks, selling. Oh, buses. the little screws and shit? Yeah. Oh, the, the trucks. Bought. Yeah. Yeah. I was charging like a dollar fifty to repair. Two okay. Dollar, so. That's dope. Uh, yeah. yeah, I sold a. I, I had a. I was selling candy, and then I also sold like basketball cards, Pokemon cards, Yu Gi Oh. You know, I would buy them, and then um, I would make them cool in the school, and then sell them to everybody. Yeah, the hell straight out the binder. Actually, man, I was into Pokemon cards, and they. Uh, I brought them to school one day, and I got them confiscated by my uh, teacher. Oh yeah, that happened to me. Uh, yeah, and uh, she wouldn't give them back. So my dad came there and said, "Hey, where are my son's Pokemon cards?" I want them back. And then she's like, she didn't want to tell me, but they ended up getting stolen from her desk. Fuck. And it was like, I had like 3,000 cards. You know what I mean? Oh, shit. Not the whole bundle. All all my holographics, everything. No, I know what that kind of pain feels like. Yeah, that hurt really bad. I was like, I'd be be sitting good today. (laughs) Yeah, right. You know? Now, did you always have, uh, were you always in, were you like the kind of guy that was always in relationships younger at a young age? No, actually, um, yeah, I was a a really late bloomer. I didn't, uh, the first like kiss kiss I had was after a play in tenth grade in high mm. school. The first kiss was in tenth grade. Well, like I, I had like a little peck on the lips, like when I was younger, like a little oh, okay. thing. When but I like eight, uh, when I was like eight or nine, right? Yeah. But like the first girl that like actually kissed me was like after a school play, and I was like, whoa, what was that? You know? Right, right, right. Um, and then after that, I was just always nervous. I always got I got picked on a lot growing up, and uh, mm-hmm. the me getting picked on a lot in school, I was like, I never had that like assertion. You right. know what I mean? I was I was tiny too, man. I didn't I didn't work out. I, I played sports. I played baseball okay. for years, but okay. Um, yeah, my my actual first girlfriend was end of senior year of high school. Oh wow! Yeah, and I didn't uh, lose my virginity till after uh, first year of college. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. A real real saint. Yeah. 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 And it was the same girl. We were gonna save you till marriage. So it was, oh. you know, it was it was one of those like things where you like. Have you seen her? Have you seen her since? No, nah, I mean, I've yeah. seen her, like, on social media. I um, wish her happy birthday last year. So, like, nice. hey, I hope you're doing well, just, like, as a friendly thing. Like, we're cordial. Nothing bad. It was just grew apart, so. Okay. Well, how, so, all right, talk to me about how, like, the actual process of getting on Love is Blind started. Because, uh, I don't know, I think about I think about it all the time, man. It's crazy to, like, live that lifestyle and then go from zero to 100. Like, because once that show came out, that show came out during the pandemic, which... You know, I watched it and during the pandemic with a girl. Girl made me watch it, and um, that made you watch it. She made me oh, watch it because okay. I didn't want to see it. I don't like reality TV, but then I was like, "Oh yeah, okay. I know." <laughs> and then, um, but then I was like, "Damn!" Then I, you know, been hanging around you lately, and I'm like, you know, you you stopped by everybody. Oh, go ahead, sir. yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, you're uh, uh, yeah. Wow, it's like you're stopped by a lot of people, and it was like, man, I, I think about it, like going to zero to a hundred must be hard, but. What was it like to actually get involved with the Love is Blind, Blind process? Yeah, so a lot of people have um, asked me this question in person mm-hmm. over the years, sort of how it happened. And um, it was actually wild. They found me on uh, Tinder. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, which is uh, known as the hookup app. You know? Yeah, but, yeah, I remember Tinder. But I didn't do necessarily Tinder for, not necessarily, I didn't do Tinder for the hookup. It was, um, I think I was trying to see like where I, where I was classified at, right? Mm. Dating apps have always been like a classification process for me. It's like, who, who would I match with, right? Mm-hmm. Who, what class am I in in society now? Like, you right. know, on the level of like, am I attracted to you? Would we match? Right, yeah. right, right. And I never, I only met like one person off Tinder ever. And I don't know, I mean, it was, was kind of weird. Yeah, it was weird. I mean, yeah. It was fine. It was just felt a little catfishy, you know? Yeah. I mean, when you saw me, like, it was, I looked the same. It was like, okay. Right, right. But, um, matched this uh, girl on there, talked, and you know it was it was just good conversation, casual. We added each other on social media. I saw she's like got twenty thousand followers. She's like, whoa, this is like wow, mm-hmm. wow. girl, twenty thousand followers interested in me as well. Right. Um, and then long story short, like I think like we had like good chemistry, but it was also like she's like, what are you looking for? I was like, well, I'm actually looking for like something long term, and. You know, she's like, well, I think you'd actually be better for the show on casting. And mm. I'm, like, I'm like, okay, catfish. Blah, blah, blah. You know? Right. And, um, you know, she's like, well, I'm serious. I'm serious. So I sort of started talking to her, went through the process. And it was a social experiment at the time. Right. It, we didn't know it was going to be Netflix. We didn't know anything about the show. Wow. It was like, hey, you're going to blind date people, get to know them. But the concept didn't really make sense the way they explained it. So, and then. Uh, you think they did that on purpose to like 
not have you really know what you were getting into kind of yeah because a lot of people applied for this show apparently for like mm. eight months to a year people have been applying to be on this social experiment but you know from like those casting sites right like right you always never know like yeah. what's going on i think on. they just wanted something more authentic not people that were trying to just be on right right and i wasn't looking I was, yeah yeah okay yeah. okay i see that makes sense yeah i was like i was i mean i had a great job you know what mm. i mean so i was i was doing well for myself but also couldn't find that that uh that person right and uh yeah so went through the process ended up uh getting casted and um first day on set you know nick lachey came out vanessa lachey and they're like hey, mm. you're gonna be blind dating people and if you find out that you know you think you can build a connection with them you'll get engaged without ever seeing them they're like right, oh, right, fog. right. i'm like well that and they're like you know I was like, it made no sense but i was like this is crazy i was nervous as shit yeah how do you go in and start talking to somebody without seeing them and you're like what do i, I know. ask what questions do you want to ask you know what i, I mean? know yeah that is crazy. Yeah. It's like, oh, what's your favorite color? No, get the fuck out of here. You got seven minutes your first date. I did it. 15 women, seven minutes apiece, back to back. Damn. And in that process, they don't show a lot of that, right? But like you, I'm like, I got to ask important fucking questions. I got to have a serious conversation because if, if this is going to work. Right. If it's going to work. Which I was, I was still. I was, you was kind of hesitant about it. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Who thinks they're going to go in there and meet somebody without seeing them? Like, right. Just, so you, you think you got into it with the approach like, I'm just going to try this out. And like, obviously, I'm going to be, you know, it's a show. But did you really go in there thinking you were finding love? Or was it just like, I'm just, just trying this out? And then when you got on there, was it like a whole different thing? It was both. It was okay. uh, like I really wanted a connection. Like I am, I'm big for a good relationship with somebody I love and care about. Like mm. you know, I mean, dating around today is like it, it's a fucking toxic. Yeah, know? bunch of red flags. Uh, yeah, bunch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and they wonder why I'm a red flag now. Right. <laughs> you all push me to this. Now. Oh. Um, but but no, it's um. Fuck. Yeah. Fuck. Oh, <laughs> they created a villain. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real though. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, so it, it, the concept was when i was sitting up in bed the night before we went on our first dates mm -hmm. i was like i literally had this pen and paper in my hand i was like what am i gonna ask these girls yeah and the only thing i wrote down on that fucking shit of paper was and like literally like an hour and a half was do you like to travel do you like to travel that's all and I was like, yeah I was like, well, you couldn't come up with anything better than that what's your favorite color and then i was like you know what's what like, I, was like, I was like there's no way for me to prepare going into this experiment i'm just gonna go in there and see what fucking happens right 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 and it's like you shouldn't be scared because you're not even gonna see the person right right but i think true that, this experiment went so well because you can't see who it facial is. Facial expressions. Right. You can't see what they're like. I'm like, hey, Jeremy, fuck you. Right? Okay. Like, yeah. That, I, look, that, hey, I hey, see fuck you. you, Jeremy. Yeah. Wait, why are you saying that? And then fuck you, Jeremy. Right? Like, so okay. Like, you can't. I'm just saying that. Like, you know, <laughs> why are you telling me fuck you? <laughs> why are you fuck you? Fuck you. No, I'm just saying, Damn, I'm saying that in a sense like you can read if it's aggressive or if it's, hey, man, fuck you, man. Like, right, fuck, right, 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 right. You can read the sense of direction of people's facial expressions. When you're in the pod, Oh, you okay. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, for you sure. Can be like, you can be like, what do you mean by that? But I may not take it as you being like uncomfortable, and then the conversation keeps going smooth because I can't read your facial expression. Right now, I wonder: Do they have? Um, I shouldn't ask this question, but I would be upset if it was like a like a huge woman. Why would you be upset? About that? <laughs> I wouldn't be upset, but I'm just like maybe because I, I watch. I, the only reason why I say that, and I, I'm not fat shaming people or anything like that, but. I see uh, YouTube videos where they like blindfold people, mm -hmm. and then uh, like a, like this guy is like kissing a bigger woman, or or the vice versa, you know, like a hot girl is kissing yeah. a bigger yeah. bigger dude, and then they get upset when when the blindfold well, comes off. Well, that's the thing you have to clear your mind about is right. if one that's something that could have been totally expected. We, right, right, right. Me and the guys in the pods, you know, talked about it. Even before I went on there, like my family and like friends were like, hey, like, what if it's somebody you're not attracted to? Well, right, well, right, right. That's a risk I have to take because today's. Right. To, to, okay, yeah. In today's time, it's everything's become superficial. Right, right, right. This concept was for me is like, I had a glow up. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, and, and I still think I look fucking horrible on camera. Don't get mm -hmm. me wrong. When I watch myself on Love is Blind, I like, I get, I feel like I'm cringy. I'm like, right, right. The fuck? I couldn't watch myself. Well, yeah. Tough. And then, and then everybody sees me in person. They're like, wow, mm -hmm. you look way better in person. You're yeah. taller. You're more attractive. Um, but I started working out. I started having a better uh, hygiene regimen. I started mm -hmm. like doing like moisturization. Once you got on the show, you're saying. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah, yeah. Or like after. After. Yeah. And uh, I mean, well, I started working out years before that, but mm -hmm. for me, it was like, I got to the point where I had a good job. I was able to go out and then right. it, I had a nice car. So people mm. would start looking at you and be like, oh, well, he has this, this, and this. Like, they yeah. didn't see me for who I was on the inside. And I still right. had a really good heart, right? So 
the concept of the show was like, finally, girls can get to know me for who I really am, who not really what I are. look like, not what I have. For your heart. Exactly. For your and I was like, heart. And I was like, if I feel that way, then women feel this way. Right, right. So I was like, when I went into this experiment, like, yeah, it's like you want to be attracted to the person, right? Like, I don't need a super tiny girl, right? I like something I can grab onto. You know what I mean? Like, I like, I like just, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, but for me, I said like when I fell in love with Giannino on the show. Yeah, I was gonna. Uh, yeah, our first, our first date went horrible, and I went out there and started making cliches. Like, is there anybody you didn't get along with? I was like, yeah, that Giannino chick. I was like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even go on another date with her. It was just weird conversation, right? right? Um, and then I was like, I, I was still curious though, cause I was just so attracted to her voice, the way she like spoke to me and shit. I was like, wow. I was like, I never heard a voice like that in my life. Yeah. You can fall in love with a girl's voice. Yeah. And I did, like, man. Yeah, I, I did. And, uh, you know, I got really deep in personality with her and like, uh, you know, like we started talking about life stuff on our next date and we're like, I'm like, wow. Like she slowly went from like my last choice to like my first choice. Mm. And by day three, he's like, Hey, if you had to get engaged to somebody right now, who would it be? And I was like, Giannina. So yeah, what I wanted, I wanted to ask you that what time frame was this all over? Cause that, that's important. Yeah. We filmed, uh, so from day one of dating in the pods mm. to engagements right. was nine days, nine days. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And it started with 15 women, 15 guys. 15 women, 15 guys over nine days. Yeah, by day That's three. That's insane. You know, and if the people were building a real connection and they felt like they were there for different reasons, they got booted from the show. Right, like, right. Or they just, like, they weren't open-minded about the experiment. Because there's people on Love is Blind. That have never been seen. That haven't been seen, but are like playing through the motion of the show a along with you guys, right? Or they kick, they, they are kicked off? Yeah. You said that? Okay. Yeah, they're just like, hey, pack your bags, going home. Okay, so then you met Giannina, Giannina, and... I mean, my most memorable moment from the show was y'all's relationship and kind of like how toxic it was. I mean, was it toxic? Yeah, I would, I would assume so. Yeah, it was yeah. toxic. It was toxic. <laughs> toxic. I didn't want to put that label on it without you saying that. But um, yeah, I just remember like the scene in the kitchen. Like I just remember a kitchen scene and where she said something. And Oh, yeah, the infamous scene. Yeah, like I, I remember like that one's the one. I don't even know what was exactly said, but like that, I just remember y'all arguing, and that was like the it's, thing that I it's remember. It's marked in my head. It's marked yeah. in my head. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Yeah, that, it's scarred. Yeah. yeah um, um, but yeah, that I was like, that was that was a tough, like, was, was that tough for you to deal with afterwards? Fuck yeah. Was yeah. Because, you know, I, and that wasn't the only time it had happened. So right, it right. Was like, that was just what the camera caught. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know, I, I thank goodness they added some stuff out because it would have really broke me. But, right. Uh, no, I mean, she was literally like, hey, you know how you always say it's the best sex of your life and I never return the compliment. Right, right, right. And I was like, boom. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Was, and I was, was like, tough. I had such an anxiety attack in a little moment. I was like, man, fuck, that just fucking hurt. And it was yeah. Because like, I'm open to discuss things. I'm very open minded. I'm mm -hmm. like, if you like something or you don't like something, tell me and I'll work on it and adjust. Right. And um, I mean, I was, I was about to get really defensive, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I, I did for a quick second. I was like, that's not going to help. I was like, and, right. and I'm here to like, the big reason I went to this experiment was to understand women better and like see what they see, like understand things the way they understand them. So I was like, if I get defensive and I start pushing off, I'm just going to crumble this whole relationship before it really has a chance to start. Right, right. Um, so I went in and, you know, and I don't think they really showed it, but, you know, I gave her a hug and I was like, hey, like, I'll work on it. I'll be more, I'll show more initiative. I will, I'll be better. You know? Yeah. But trying to be a good we'll, guy. We'll talk through this Yeah, and, and, and things will get better. Um, so that was, that was a tough scene. After that, I, um, I really, uh, behind the scenes, I didn't even really talk to Janina about it, but I started doing research online and like watching videos, like mm -hmm. not about just sexual performance, but how to stimulate a woman. Whoa. Yeah. yeah like, okay. You did your real yeah, detail. I did, I did okay. deep research. Um, Damn. And like what stimulates a woman and like what, what makes her come more like, so after, Jesus yeah, Christ. So after that, Jesus I, Christ, yeah, this is getting X-rated. Yeah, it is, but it's true. Right? <laughs> it's really, it's true. I'm a man of God. Come um, on, man. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Um, no, that 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 is a. That, I mean, I guess you took the initiative to get after the things that. I mean, because as a guy, you just always want to be better. Yeah, you know. So yeah. and you, after that, I took this uh, like mental vow to myself, and I mean, it was very very few occasions. But after that, I was like, I'll never come before a female. Right. And I've stuck true to that. Like, wow. you know what I mean? So wow, that's uh, amazing. You're yeah, better than me. Yeah, and I mean, you've. Like you probably get somebody like, oh, I can't. Well, you can. I mean, do we need to add a vibrator? Like, what, what, yeah. what, what do you like? Because I'm sure you do it on your own, right? Yeah. So, 
that was for me, it was a big turning point. And then, you know, after the show came out, we filmed in 2018. Yeah, which is crazy. Yeah. I'm just like, you know, the show comes out in 2020. Right. And then, you know, I'm I'm doing this like press tour and everybody. That was a big question about that sex scene. What Mm -hmm. about what she said about you? How do you feel about that? How do you Mm -hmm. handle that? I'm like, well, it's two years later and we're still together. So I did something right. Right, right. Um, I will say, though, you know, I was thinking about this today that it must have been, it's tough um, expressing your feelings in front of cameras like like you got to think the average person doesn't do that and so i do kind of like i do sit back thinking like man i kind of not feel bad but it's just like not that if we put cameras on a lot of guys it will there will be a lot of shit that you know people (laughs) you know what i'm saying people like kind of assault not assault you but like (laughs) you know they say these things about you or sometimes i'm like okay yeah that would happen to any guy that you know, I've cried, but I wasn't on camera crying, you know, that type of thing. I cried a lot on camera. <laughs> like every time I turn but, around, the camera's like, oh, is Damien crying? Yeah, like, oh, <laughs> shit, let's get yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, so that that must have been tough. So then fast forward, y'all get to the altar, and then I, I don't really remember. Well, I mean, like, you can tell me what happened, because I don't, I don't really remember exactly yeah. what happened. So yeah. you, you told her no when y'all no, came I, to the altar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What she said, yeah. yeah. Right, right. <laughs> Now, look, I, no woman should ever be put in that situation. Right? I know. I mean, it's nine and, days, and bro. No, it's insane. No, no, no. The course of the whole show filming from pod day one to wedding was seven weeks. Oh. So we started filming October 1st. We didn't get done. My wedding was November 15th. Oh. But nine days from meeting in the pods, talking in the pods to blind engagement. Oh. And then we gotcha. went to Mexico for a week. You know, Got you. Then, okay. So y'all then, started doing the date and things. Like yep, the and girlfriend and boyfriend things. Yeah, and then we moved into an apartment together in Atlanta mm-hmm. for filming, and then you know had our wedding. Uh, but that was the thing too. Like if you got married, we had our marriage certificate. We went to the courthouse, got our marriage certificate. So like if you said I do, you were actually married. And a lot right. of people was like, was it real? I was like, yeah, like, yeah. yeah, it was real. If it wasn't real, I'd be like, hey, yeah, I do. Like we'll figure this out later. Because um, you know you never want to be that person. But right, right. Uh, that was a big thing too. Is like uh, Giannina never wanted to get married on the, throughout the entire show. Oh, okay. She was, you know, she broke up with me like three or four times off set, like off camera. Right. So there's a lot of stuff happening behind camera that nobody saw, even the producers, right? Mm-hmm. So um, I'd come in and it's like, you know, I know what's missing in a relationship. And I'm like, well, what? And she's like, I think we should just be friends. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that's a lot missing in a fucking relationship, you know? So, um, and, and I still loved her. I was like, okay, well, we'll slow down. This is fast for both of us. It's something new. I was like, you know, if we shouldn't be friends first, we'll be friends. Right. Um, at the end of the day, we had to have a wedding no matter what, right? Like, I mean, that's what we signed up for. So, um, and you have to go to the altar. You have to you have to make it to the altar to really figure out like what is your heart telling you in that moment. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, even even a few days before the wedding, she's like, I can't do this. I can't marry you. Like, I love you. Like, you know, I want to be with you. Like, I see something here, but also like you know, it's. I, I think that there was a lot going on with the fa- her family stuff being mm-hmm. behind the scenes too. Like, her family came on to the show and they were there. Right, right. I remember that yeah, too. I remember my, seeing my that. My family didn't and it's yeah. not that they didn't support me. They wanted to meet Giannina. They, okay. They're like, hey, bring her, but we just don't want to do it on camera. Right, right, and right. like, well, the producers don't want us, like, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, because they want to capture as much on camera so they can create the authenticity of mm. the, the show, right? To catch the emotions and like meeting people for the first time, whatever. So, um, but they wanted to meet her. just, they just didn't want to do it on camera. Right. Right. So, um, and, and I signed up for the show they didn't. And I said, look, I'm not, even if y'all want to come on out, I, I'm not going to put you guys in this situation. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got a little that brother. Nice. I yeah. got a little brother and a little we got a family. Too. Yeah. And, you know, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to be edited. I don't know what that's going to come across as. I don't want this creating problems at their school or them growing up. Right. So those are all things we took into consideration. Um, but that's, that's pretty thoughtful. Because, I, you know, I watched the, uh, speaking on that, I watched that Pamela Anderson uh, Netflix series. Uh, and, the kids had to deal with a lot of shit with yeah. her, you know, being in Playboy and stuff yeah. like that. I'm like, that's not, you know, it's it's nice to consider that sometimes, but yeah. and you know, it, it's um, it was hard at the time because like I wanted them to be involved, but I'm also like now looking back, I'm so glad they never came on. Right, right, 100%. right, right, right. You know what I mean? And, yeah. And that was a big thing too. So I I went, uh, you know, see you know Janina like a few days before, two days because we sort of separated like five days before the wedding, just like to get things in order. Mm-hmm. Um, and she was still like, you know, I just I I can't marry like my family like you know they don't support this, but they support her, right? Like if you're gonna do this, you're gonna do it. But 
So for me, there was just so much back and forth the whole time. Right, right. I want to be friends. I'll be your boyfriend. I don't think yeah. it's a good idea. I We've all been there. You. Yeah, it's like, and I'm like, and I was a bunch of toxic I was shit. Like, I was like, I love you. Like, yeah. I, I would marry you. I was like, but also like, there's not enough confidence in you to continue this relationship as a married couple as there was at me at the time. So I told her two days before the wedding, she's like, I've been so mean to you. Like, I, I just feel like I'm going to be portrayed so badly. And I was like, and you forget the cameras are there a lot of times. You're yeah. Arguments and stuff, right? But I said, look, and I said, at the end of the day, we didn't come on this, like, looking back at the beginning to be on TV. We came here to find a connection we thought we wouldn't find in the most uncommon place. Right. right. And this case was a pod. So I we said, found love yeah. in a common. Is that how the song goes? I don't know. I've never heard it. But you, Becky? You do it pretty good. We found love in a common. It's a homeless. It's a what place? Hopeless. hopeless. It's hopeless. Yeah, yeah. What did I say? Uncommon. Uncommon. Place. <laughs> we uh, found love in a common place. Yeah, yeah, we found love in a hopeless place for sure, in a fucking dark pot. Um, yeah. But yeah, with that being said, man, it was. Um, I told her. I said, "Look, don't worry about it." I said, "She goes. I just. I don't want to look like a villain. Like I don't want to be a bad person. Because like you know what I yeah. mean. Like I don't. I've already been done so much and said so many things. Like, I mean, everybody saw her. She's like, "Fuck you." Like yeah. You know, very, very me, lashing out. Listen to me, motherfucker. Damn, you know she I mean? said that. Yeah, that's not nice. Yeah. But like, that's just like she expressed her emotions with words and aggression, right? That's right. Like, and you know, like that's her. Because is she uh, Hispanic? Uh, Venezuelan. Yeah. Yeah, they're kind of crazy. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I like, I like, nah, I, I, like, like I like, I like a little bit of crazy. I yeah, do, I'm not, I do yeah. too, uh, I do too. But um, yeah, with that being said, man, I um, I told her, I said, look, I said the day of the wedding, I said. Do what you need to to protect yourself, and I'll right. do what I need to to protect us. Right. And that was like when it, when it came to the time of the wedding, I was like, you know, like I wanted to marry her. I did, but I was like, it's just it wasn't. It would have been selfish of me to do that because, like, even though she said I do, like maybe she meant it, but after all the conversations and all the right. friends and I just, I can't marry you two days before the wedding. Like, and then yeah. we didn't talk the day before the wedding because like we were separated. Like, you know, you don't, you don't have any way to really communicate because like mm -hmm. you're doing all your steps with the filming and stuff to get ready. And then you're, you don't see each other until the wedding. They actually hold that true where you don't see your bride or talk to them the day before. That's good. So they um, hold that tradition in there. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, pretty nice. Yeah. But it was, it made it difficult because I couldn't read her mind. I was like, are, you know, is, are you, are you serious? So when she said, I do, I was like, fuck, like, you know, like, what am I going to do? Like, am I going to say I do and we're married? And then she hates me because like, I didn't protect her. Right. right. So all that was stirring up into the seconds. And when I said, I was, I had this slight hesitation. I was like, I do. And then I said, not. You know? Damn. And it was because like, you said that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and you even got me with that one. Yeah. I was like, I do not. Yeah. But it was like, and I, I kept, it wasn't like a, a massive distance, but if you look at it, you can hear that little distinction. Right. Yeah. And it was because I was like, she literally said, like, you know, I knew her family was like, they, they liked me, mm. you know, me and her, I love her dad. Her dad and me just got along great. Right, you know, right. Like Pops. Yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, like, if I could still have communication with her father, even though, like, since we've been broken up, I would. Like, I, mm. I love I loved that man. He was, he was amazing. Um, very supportive. Always just brought the best energy. Um, and, you know, so... But beyond that, um, that one took a beating. Obviously, she lost, you know, lost her shit. I went after her. It didn't look like I went after her, but I did. It was um, just turned into a shit show. But after yeah, that, that, was, that was tough. Up, she wouldn't end up. Uh, I went back downstairs, you know, did my little, hey, peace out, love mm -hmm. blind type interview. And then, yeah. um, you know, somebody's like, hey, like, she won't leave here without talking to you. She doesn't want to leave the place without talking to you, you know. And, mm -hmm. uh, so I went met her right after and then we ended up spending the night together we snuck back into the apartment complex that we got kicked out of like after filming and uh, oh wow. yeah, we spent the night there together and just uh you know took that time to took the time to talk things out yeah and, yeah and then we dated for you know two years, years. after that yeah, yeah. so okay. yeah um so it was a lot but yeah. yeah like looking back on it do you what do you think are some things that positively affected you from doing this and negatively affected you what do you mean like uh you know i guess coming off the show like do you think do you look back on it and think that oh like this the show kind of helped me learn this about myself or i didn't like this from the show like i, I went on the show and like now i don't like this about myself or like i think just any, I, did, any did you pull anything away from being on the show or going through the experience yeah so i, I always you know i always wondered what it'd be like to be famous or like mm -hmm. i was like you know in the spotlight um and, and you never like you're like oh 
it'd be cool, but it would right. never happen. And then boom, COVID hit, right? And then right, right. Fucking shit just blew up. You know, yeah, that's thing, you know, anytime cool. I stepped out, I could be wearing a mask. You'd be like, oh my God, Damien, yeah. Damien, 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 Damien. And um No, I've seen it. Uh, yeah. Like different cities. Yeah. And it, it's it's wild. I I'm very thankful. I mean, I've never been rude to a fan or turned them away or like yeah. anything like that. I'm very I'm very thankful for that. But it uh it can't change people. You know what I yeah. mean? And that was a, a big thing in our relationship. There was just a I felt like it just shifted with the show and the cameras and the spot. Like it'll do a lot to you, right? Yeah, because you kinda don't I was thinking about this too, like you like a TV star, uh, like on the actual tube, like on the actual television, like cable television, those stars are kind of looked at differently than like somebody like you who's been on Netflix. But nowadays people watch Netflix more than, maybe more than the cable television. So oh, yeah, like way more. Yeah. So it's like, it's interesting because like, well now I know you, I don't really look at you like that, but it's interesting how many people stop you out. Cause I'm like, damn, like, well, I guess that many people are watching Netflix. It's, it's a crazy. Yeah. Crazy amount. Yeah, not that, but I mean, I, I filmed this years ago, right? Right, I right. This, I, I mean, it's 2023. I filmed this in 2018. Right, and right. It, it didn't come out 2020, but for me, I'm looking back five years. Right, right. right. Yeah, and so does, does, does that suck to like talk about things that happened so far in the past that, and then like, and then also people, like I've seen this with you, like people approach you and ask you about your relationship when, when that's something that I guess could be more, that's more private more amongst private, mo yeah. most people. You know, but people come in and ask you like, "How was it? How was she? Like, how?" And it's like, does that become annoying sometimes? Or it does, uh, because like I've I've always been that guy that just like doesn't ever really want to like, I guess like say negative things about somebody. Because like, that's the problem when you break up, mm -hmm. it's easy to be vindictive, right? Yeah, it, it's easy to say, "Hey, like, oh man, fuck this person." Like, oh yeah, right? and then they start going at you with little things, and then you start going back, and it turns into a fucking war. Yeah, it turns into and, a legit war. And for me, I've always tried to. Um, cut that back because I'm like I've been jabbed at I've, I've heard the podcast like you know since me and Gina broke up that she's done or said like oh like blah 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 this or that and um the stuff that sort of took place after the after the altar episode right which right. was a big thing um and I could have revolted I, re mm. I mean I really could have I mean honestly I don't really give a fuck now it doesn't matter I mean I'm, I'm right. speaking the truth it doesn't it doesn't bother me anymore but um I always told her I was like I won't ever like you know, disgrace our relationship. Like I love, I loved you. Like mm -hmm. I was in a relationship with you. And when it was beautiful, it was beautiful. When it was bad, it was bad. You right. Know? And, and we both did things that we may not be proud of in our relationship, but we grew a lot from each other. And she For taught sure. me a lot. She taught me patience. She well, there you me, go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. She taught me how to say, Hey, like, it's okay just to like be you, Damien, and stop mm -hmm. worrying about what everybody else thinks. Because I was like that before I went on the show, but that whole show, like being in the spotlight and the next thing you know, like, you got millions of people looking watching. At you, yeah, you, it could be a lot. Yeah, it could be a lot mentally, and you don't know how to handle it. So, would you do it again? Fuck no. You wouldn't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> no. If like, no. If, if like they said, because because they're on Love Is Blind season three right now, right? Yeah, they're already filming four. They already yeah. feel yeah. So yeah. if they were like for whatever reason, they're like, come back, Love Is Blind season four. Would you do that? Would you do something like that? <laughs> nah. I mean, so like obviously, I want to find a good relationship. Like I, I want, I want to like continue to be to be true to myself but like that was just such that was too much it was too emotionally draining. that was too much yeah yeah that's fucking I mean, crazy and it, it it wouldn't do anything for me at this point other than like i understood like it was cool the first time because i didn't understand the process i had to work through it naturally and adapt right. to it. that's why season one like all the seasons are authentic even if people go in there for alternative motives it's like you get wrapped into you get you, you get wrapped into the real life and yeah. the emotion of it, whether you want to or not. You think right, you're stronger right. than it, and you're like, right? It's because it's like it's really about your environment. Like I've noticed that, like I, you, once you get in a certain environment, you can adjust to your environment. Yeah, and that and that adjustment usually happens quickly. Yes, you know, like, like super that. fast. Yeah. Like it doesn't matter who it is. Um, so yeah, so you say you wouldn't do it now. Do you watch the new? Do you watch the new uh, uh, seasons? Yeah, yeah you I take a look the at them. Seasons, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't watched. I only watched your season, but maybe I'll go back and well, check them out. I, I watched other seasons because obviously, like in Perfect Match, like I met some of the guys from season two. Okay, yeah. So I met I met some of the guys from season two and three. So who who uh, in particular? Parks, and Shane. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah okay. And yeah. they're on the new show with me, so it was like right. I, I was like, I want to go like sort of support them after I met them on the show. I was like, oh, these are actually like cool guys, you know what I mean? And then 
I went and watched it, and you know, it's, it's a lot. It's, yeah. it's still a lot, but it it's was. It took me a year to watch my season all the way through. Oh, really? Yeah, but oh. it's like you know, people are like calling me fucking Toby from the office and shit. You know? <laughs> Chrissy Teigen called me out on Twitter, and she's like, "What'd she say? She's, damn." She's like, "What's the, what is he a GM of McDonald's?" Damn. Waffle House. Like, damn. You know, you what were I mean? being mean. Yeah, and uh, you know, I was I was a GM for a Fortune 500 company, and I was doing really well. So like, yeah, me, it was I was killing it, you know, and. So I was like, ah, oh, seeing stuff like that sort of degrading that people just make assumptions. But yeah, like, yeah, you know, people so. always, I mean, yeah. yeah, people always make like nowadays it's interesting because on the internet, people are always are always making assumptions about a person before they even like really dive yeah. into who they are, which is why I kind of wanted to sit down with you because like even people like uh, you say like Joe Rogan, for instance, I thought Joe Rogan was this like super right wing guy, like just, you know, Trump supporting dude. Which I, I don't really care if you do or don't. Don't. But once I started watching him, I was like, oh, okay. Like, I've just been seeing little clips about this person everywhere around the internet, and now I, I made my own judgment. But I haven't really do dove into who this person really is. Um, so yeah, I think that happens a lot on the internet nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's hard to have any type of private life. Right. And I try to have a private life when I can, and then people take it personal. They're like, what are you? Why are you trying? Like, if I'm dating a girl, right? Mm -hmm. And why don't you post me? You know what I mean? Right, Sometimes right, I'm right. like, where did that come from? You know what I mean? Like, right. like, why does that even matter? Like, do I have a problem sharing you or like mm -hmm. letting the world know about you? Like, do I like have a problem like doing little subtle posts like to like release it? Yeah. No. But I'm also not just gonna put a post of you up on my page when I have, you know, eight hundred plus thousand followers. Yeah. And what do that, I get from this? Yeah, not, what do I get from no, this? It's not, it's not that. It's 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 how what happens if we don't work out? You know what I mean? They, they want to jump into it like two, three weeks in. I'm like, I already did that once. Right, right. I ain't doing that shit again. You know what I mean? Yeah. I got engaged in nine days. You know what I mean? I, I changed my whole life in seven weeks. So for sure, for me, yeah, I'm like, great. I'm not now. When I go into a relationship, I have to be more open minded. I mean, I've had people make TikToks about me. You know? Like, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, before, and yeah. it's like. It's like girls that like a girl. People trying to take advantage of like the fact that they know you and all that. Yeah. That's 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 something that's hard to deal with. Yeah, I think I would struggle with dealing dealing with that. Yeah, I mean, and, and people you know, making up lies or people like creating situations that aren't really there, but yeah. like just because it's you, they'll yeah. try to do it. You know. And it was like you met. I mean, me and you went on a Charleston trip. I met this girl out there. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Yeah. You know, fell for her pretty hard. I was like, yeah. I was dry, going out all the time to see her. I wasn't seeing anybody else in between, and it was like. I really like this girl. And then all of a sudden mm. it was like, we end up like just cutting it off. And then the next day, like she makes a she full TikTok. She you. Yeah. Like the uh, next day, TikTok, like just about our private life. And it wasn't even like a, a, a TikTok in a negative way. Yeah. In a sense, it was like a clout chaser. It was just way. like a clout chaser. She was and, a clout chaser, but, bro. But I never saw it coming. And you met her. I mean, yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, like she's just no, I didn't think great she would personality, do something like that. fun, beautiful, happy. And I, I never saw that coming. So for me, I was like, what the fuck? But you know, they yeah. say clout is a hell of a drug, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was just They'll like. do anything for clout. And I just met her. I was like, why? Why would you do that? you know mm -hmm. and, and then she took it down she's like i'm sorry like i was just mad and i was like i was nah, like you wasn't like, mad you wanted them likes baby girl <laughs> baby, <laughs> she yeah. wanted them likes she got them <laughs> she got them <laughs> hey uh, wait so uh would you recommend anybody like what would you recommend to somebody who wanted to be on a reality tv show don't do it <laughs> <laughs> or like say what? no say no yeah i mean just yeah, yeah that was like your... yeah i mean so for me it's like uh people are like oh well you're on another show okay well yeah, you only saw one side of me in Love is Blind. You saw my emotional, like, I want to get married. This right, thing, right. And now, now you just see me just, like, fucking not giving a fuck, right? Yeah. Th this other side of me has developed just obviously, like, after Love is Blind and even part of my relationship with Giannina. And then, obviously, like, after we broke up, I went through major depression, a lot of anxiety. After After well, the happened. Hate to hear that. that. Yeah, I mean, I went through, like, horrible, horrible depression. Like, I started partying. I started drinking, like, just anything I could do to, like, get over it. To suppress it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, nothing was working, you know. Mm. And then I realized I had to, like, face it head on mentally. I had to learn to accept yeah. these things. I had to, like, Confront coping, it. coping mm. mechanisms, right? Um, and then when this other show opened up, I was like, you know what? Like, there's an opportunity here for me mm. to say, like, I, I, you're Damien from Love is Blind. Okay, well, I do another show. You're Damien from Perfect Match. Okay, uh, you're Damien. No, I'm Damien. You know yeah. what I mean? But I'm a human. Yeah, this show allows me to express and be more free to who I am and like people are gonna see that. I mean I, I come in strong in the in the next batch of episodes and, Woo! and, and I'm all about this show, brother. Yeah and I, I <laughs> I'm all about that. I love this show. But this is this is the I'm like damn I'm actually hooked on this motherfucker. Yeah I was I was very um I was very I feel like 
less of a man in my relationship with Giannino. Like I did man mm-hmm. shit. I fixed right, cars. Right, right. I'd move her. I'd, I'd hang her shit up. I'd take care of like difficult situations. Somebody, you know, hitting on her the wrong way in a bar. She mm-hmm. felt uncomfortable. I'd be like, hey, you stand up for her. Up. Yeah. 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 I'm not, there ain't nobody I'm scared of. Right, I right, mean, right. I mean, I'm, I've been in more fights than I can count, but it's not mm-hmm. nothing I'm proud of. I just, I'm not afraid to take up for people that can't take up for themselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't care how big you are, who you are. Like, if you're hurting my friends, family, or girlfriend, like, I'm, I'm going to go to war for you. And, yeah. Uh, people will probably laugh and they'll be like, oh, no. I'm like, well, my friends that know me know. Right, you know? right, right. And um, yeah, I've seen you, I've seen you turned up, uh, turn up a few times. <laughs> <laughs> You get out of control a few times. Yeah. yeah, but like you just like you know me. Like if you're messing with me or the people yeah. I care about, like I'm going to war. There's, right, right. It's not hesitation. It's like we're doing this. So right. Um, but you know, and that stance of show allowed me to open that part of Damien up again and say, hey, like you're saying in this new show. Am, yeah, yeah. I, I don't hold back. I'm like I right. am upfront and truthful, and I am like. This is a. I mean, I guess that's what a lot of these people do. The um, what are those? Uh, the, the signs, zodiac signs. Zodiac signs. Yeah, and all that shit. And I'm, I'm a Gemini, right? So yeah, this, me too. Might come into that. Much. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 <laughs> all right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, you feel me? Yeah. And yeah. people are like, oh, you got multiple personalities. Well, I guess I do because you're about to see me go from crying to love is blind and emotional to like. I, I mean, I probably cry on the show too, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but to see in a whole different side of Damien, fun, adventurous, like outgoing, right? And probably like, look, I'm not an alcoholic, but when I drink, I abuse alcohol. Okay, you know I mean, what that I mean? makes sense. Yeah, like, I think we so all do. When, I, when I'm doing a party or something, but I don't really, um, I don't ever forget anything. I still know what I'm doing. I'm still able to like function properly, speak properly, right? Yeah. It just makes me more loose, more fun. What is, how many drinks, this is something Becky could look up. Here we are. <laughs> how many drinks is abusing alcohol? Like is it like is two drinks too much? I, I mean, I think it goes off individuals, right? I mean, if you're oh yeah, if you're three hundred pounds and you yeah. can take a lot, I mean, you can drink probably half a bottle of vodka and be fine. All right, for women it's three drinks. Yeah. So every three, week, three drinks in a day, and then for men it's four drinks in a day, fourteen in a week. So every time we go out so. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we're alcohol. We become now part of alcohol. We are a part. We're we're a we're part al- alcohol. Yeah, we're abusing alcohol because I have more than. Do I have more than? You have more than four drinks when you go out. Uh, not usually. I mean, I have more than four shots. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll have probably. What about you? Do you have more than three drinks? I probably have like four drinks. Yeah. Yeah. Four drinks. But I, I, yeah, I probably have like four I mean, drinks tops. But you've seen me. I mean, like, I'm a I'm slow a, drinker though. Yeah, yeah. I'm a tank though. I mean, you yeah, yeah. Really, Dave, you done with that? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You drink your drinks kind of quick. I'm like, bro, slow down. But like, we're just we just got here. But you never see me like different character. Really, it's like no, I, no, I no, no. More relaxed, more fun. I no. probably talk more, say stupid yeah. shit, <laughs> yeah. but. But I'm still functional. Well, nobody has to take care of me, you know. For sure. All right, now I want to ask you about your. Uh, you're wearing your OnlyFans hoodie, <laughs> you know. Let's let's talk about OnlyFans, man. Yeah, because yeah, OnlyFans has been. Uh, you're on OnlyFans now, and yeah. you've been posting your content, and, and I've saw OnlyFans. They actually been like uh, backing you too, like you know, posting you on yeah. on their Instagram and Twitters and stuff like that. And uh, how how's that going for you? How's OnlyFans, man? I don't know anything about it. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so I was actually against it. Uh, oh, really? I said I would never do it. I was like, I wasn't going to support like my girlfriend doing it. Because me and Janina talked about it one time. She said, what if I did like OnlyFans or something? Yeah. And I was like, I just don't know if I could date you if you did OnlyFans. And that's just right. me being honest. They'd be hypocritical of me to say otherwise, right? Yeah. But then I was like, you know what? She started doing like Savage X Fenty, like doing like lingerie. And it, and it like for me as a man i didn't like you don't like your girlfriend being out there like in lingerie and no nah. and other guys like you know looking at him on Instagram and the dm and i'm like you don't like that yes yeah, like that's one thing giannina taught me like that is something i took very positively from my relationship mm. is she taught me to be less insecure as a man mm. and that was that was something that i had to really open my mind and heart to because i was very like no nah, like i don't want you wearing that wear nipple covers blah 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 like mm. you're wearing a blazer like you know what i mean with no bra mm. um and and i wish i could go back and change that because i made her uncomfortable in a lot of situations where i was like i don't want you wearing that out right and that becomes very controlling yeah it and, does and yeah. that can lead to other controlling things yeah um and she really taught me to back off and i learned to like you know more near the end of our relationship i was like, like yeah you like you do you like uh it wasn't worth the arg- argument you know what i mean right, right and i'm like how can i get mad if she's posting pictures in lingerie right and then but before we were dating i was liking girls pictures in lingerie like i want to see that mm-hmm. it's good for engagement it's good for following it's good for you know yeah. brand deals whatever right yeah so um she taught me to, to get into that back like into your 
posting that type of content? No, no, oh, you know, she oh, didn't shit. get me into that. Oh. No. She just, and I was like, how's it for you? I post a picture shirtless, you know what I mean? It's some underwear. Right. And then she can't post a picture in bra and panties or, right, right, right. or lingerie. Yeah, it's a double standard. So yeah. And she taught me to break the idea of double standards and she really, and, and it locked into me and I am now like, now I can date somebody and they can have an OnlyFans and I'm like, Hey, do your thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want you fucking another guy on your OnlyFans. You know what I mean? Or doing some right, crazy right. shit like that. I'm not down yeah. with that, but, um, yeah, where you draw the line, bro? Yeah, and it, you, that she can have an OnlyFans, but your girlfriend can have an OnlyFans, but she can't hook up on there. <laughs> I mean, with, with me, no face, <laughs> no, me, face no face, no trace. But, okay. but I just like you know, I don't want to be dating somebody that's you know that's out you know banging somebody yeah. else for content. Now you're doing lingerie, you're doing like a boudoir shoot, whatever. Like I can get over that, right, you know right. what I mean? Because it's work. Um, but I also, in the same sense, like even I created my OnlyFans account, like like five months ago, six months ago, five months ago. Mm. You created yeah. the account like your personal to view or are you saying your own to like, you knew you were going to get into it? I was, I was thinking about getting into oh, it. Oh, okay. Um, and I was like, well, you know, the, um, the concept behind it, everybody's like, hey, you should do it, you should. And I'm like, guys don't typically perform well at OnlyFans. Yeah. Right? I, I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah, I would so not I mean, know. George Fowler yeah. has OnlyFans, though, right? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, we what actually do. Content, y'all doing we we actually do. We actually do it. Um, we would just post like behind the scenes shit. Of I bet you do Atlanta, shit. Of Atlanta. Okay, not, not people. Yeah, okay. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. So for me, I was like, I talked to a bunch of people. I, I had a bunch of girlfriends that did it. Um, I knew one or two guys from like other like reality shows that did it, and they're like, man, honestly, they, you know, just do you, do what you want to do. And I'm right. like, I was like, well, I don't want to show dick on there, you know what I mean? Whoa, I yeah. Like, yeah. And then yeah. and they're like, why not? And I'm like, I ah, like, I mean, they're like. You know, I was like, well, I just, I mean, I don't, I don't. You want to keep it classy. You don't want to be yeah, a porn but, star. I yeah. mean, if you start showing, your, you know, your genitals, <laughs> yeah, like you turn into a porn star status. You yeah. Know? Um. So like, it, it, and it, and I think it's a slippery slope too. Like once you start doing like the more clothes you take off, it, <laughs> it, it, it gradually builds to something bigger. Somebody always wants more. Yeah. Somebody's yeah. always willing to pay more. Yeah. You know exactly. what I mean? And you're exactly. like, okay. It's like yeah. people are like, oh, I would I wouldn't I wouldn't get naked on there. Right. I wouldn't I wouldn't do this. And I'm like, what if I give you ten million dollars cash? Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. I'm getting naked. <laughs> you know, I'm yeah. getting naked. I yeah. mean, it's just about to get weird. You know yeah. what I mean? So um it, that's that's a perspective. Um and it took me, you know, obviously till probably I'm three weeks on OnlyFans now, um, and got a lot more positive review from it than I thought I would. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but it what it, this the, the big reason I really went into doing the OnlyFans thing was is because I felt so uncomfortable with not just the way I look on TV, but like how I am as a reality TV star, yeah. how I am as an influence we're trying to like the word influencer mm-hmm. you know what i mean it's like what everybody's a fucking influencer these days right right no, <laughs> i mean all of our parents were working fucking you know 15 hours a day for 20 years to that's true to give us a life and now and they're now, like they're like when was the last work. time you stepped into an office i'm like i don't like, i never did you, you know like <laughs> i never I, did i i mean i I, yeah. I still do work i still do jobs i still do things but it's on my own schedule you know what right I mean? right right and people are like how, how do you do that well i'm an influencer yeah, you no, gotta take a risk. You gotta take a yeah, risk. You gotta get naked uh, on OnlyFans. Whoa, whoa, whoa! No, you gotta, you gotta get you gotta get engaged without ever seeing somebody. You know? Oh, you know? yeah, that's right. No, that's right. I'm kidding. Okay. Uh, but that was like none. I didn't. I thought maybe even from that show, I'd get like maybe five thousand followers. Right, you know right. I, mean? I didn't expect it to do it. Damn near um, a million. But at the end of the day, it's like you monetize on that. You're like, okay, well now you have fans that are engaged in you. They want to see more of you. They want to be involved with you. They they love you. They use your what happened in your life and use it as a tool on how their life's going and can you help them through it you know right me i punch it like i went on this little bender and i was posting a bunch of party shit mm-hmm. and i'm like why like who does that impress like i see people party and i just skip to the next fucking video right, so right. now i'm trying to do more meaningful fun interactive yeah, right. tiktoks and content that mm-hmm. like you know just create some type of laughter make somebody's day or also like wow it's cringe as fuck right 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 but i also just entertain that. people yeah people are like yeah. man damien that's cringe as fuck like blah 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 why would you do that and i'm like yeah, but you do it too. You're just not doing it to the world. Right, right. right? So Yeah. And no, a lot of people honestly can't do it. 
You know, like yeah. like a lot of people have jobs and stuff like that, and they don't want to jump on OnlyFans because maybe somebody sees it or something like that. The but fear, like, and that's it's a, yeah, it's a there's a level of fear associated with like being yourself, kind of. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and that's exactly and that's what because like we just met we met somebody yesterday who's like, yeah, I want to do an OnlyFans. I wish I could do an OnlyFans and, and hear I, all my and pictures. I'm like, and I'm like, you can. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. she was like, well, no, I can't promote it because uh, if it goes on my Instagram, then my family sees it. I think that's that's really. People don't want to upset their family. Yeah, and that was like that, that, was, that was that was that was a weird. Right, Becky. <laughs> <laughs> what up, Becky? <laughs> that that smile. It's a smile for me. Yeah. Um, but that was a big thing too. I was like, before I do this, like, you know, obviously I had perfect match coming out, and, mm -hmm. and I get I get I get naked on there. You know, I'm like, whoa, oh, whoa, hey, Come yeah, on, man. But for me, it was like, I like instigated. Like we were in the we were like in you know we we're doing some shit, but I was in some. Of this don't spoil it. I'm not gonna spoil it. Okay. We're just like you know we're just doing a thing, and then I'm like you know this is fucking boring. Let's turn this shit up. You yeah, know what I mean let's let's all get naked. Fuck yeah, it. okay. Um, and I sort of led that escapade. And then, but literally just said don't spoil it. And he spoils it. <laughs> no, I mean like <laughs> but like, but you see right. it in the preview. Right. right. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't so, know that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they already okay. spoiled it. Yeah. Oh, okay. But you know, for me, this really starting the OnlyFans thing was to make me stronger mentally and not care so much what everybody thinks about me because for the last few years, all I've done is see negative, like when I see negative comments or people, I read so much into it that it puts me back into depression. I was like, I gotta do a show. I gotta do something else to separate me from love is blind. That's where I started. Right. I went through it. I'm thankful for the opportunity. I wouldn't do it again, but I wouldn't go back and do it differently. Right, right. Um, okay. I'm thankful for my relationship with Giannina. Although it may not have ended the way I wanted it to, it's like, I learned a lot from that relationship. I grew and I am. I'm sitting here with you today because of yeah. that, right? Yeah, so, yeah. True. Um, and the OnlyFans thing was, I was like, this is something I would never fucking do. Right. So I'm going to do it. Well, hey, brother. You get know that I mean? money. Yeah. Get at, that fucking money. You can find me at uh, Damien. Still hustling. Damien, Still hustling. Damien Powers on OnlyFans. Damien. It may be under Damien underscore. Damien underscore Powers, underscore powers on OnlyFans. Under, underscore. Underscore. Yeah. underscore. Subscribe to him. I like the fact that you're still hustling, man. It was a long way from selling candy back in on the school bus, and yeah. you're still selling a different type of candy yeah. just for the eyes. Yeah, <laughs> this one's a little sweeter though. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, hey, man. I, I I wait. I got some more. Oh, wait, I got like quick questions. Um. Uh. What's your favorite romantic movie? <laughs> <laughs> uh, favorite romantic movie, probably. Um. You know, honestly, I watched The Notebook recently for the first time. For real? Yeah, it was really good. I was That's surprised. a good one. Yeah, that was that was pretty good. Good little uh. Yeah. Rom. No com. Rom com. Yeah. Oh, this is what I want to ask you too. Uh, because you're like, would you say you're kind of romantic? Oh, I'm super romantic. When I'm in a relationship, what, I'm super romantic. Yeah. What is something that you would um a tip that you would give to guys about being romantic? Because like, I feel like they're like single guys out there, they don't really know what to do sometimes, you know, yeah. like they don't really know. We and we all kind of come together and trade stories sometimes like, oh, I did this for this person. And she liked it, you know, and it's like, yeah, that's, you, that's you, how we kind of learn when you really didn't do it. You're just trying to be cool. In front right. Of guys. <laughs> right. 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 You know what I mean? Right. But like, what's something that I feel like you've done uh, that you'll do that you think that women would appreciate? Like, I yeah. guess no, it could be something small. I'll, I'll, it could be something small. I'll tell you 100 percent where a lot of these guys need to start. One. Where? Stop being a fuck boy. Okay. You know? uh, okay. But but like in in a sense of too, like you go out with your boys, you're like, yeah, like I hope we meet girls and I hope we hook up. Like lose that mindset. Mm -hmm. One. Don't let don't talk don't think with your dick. Okay. Think with your mind, think with your heart, right? Okay. Because that's what we do a lot of times. It's hard. Me, yeah. No, I never no when when have you ever been out with me and I'm like looking to go out to hook up? Like right, we right, may right. make a joke or something, like, oh yeah. you know, we might, shot, yeah, whatever. But, but I never go out with the intention to hook up. Mm -hmm. And very rarely in my life have I ever hooked up with somebody on the first night. Right. Like I get okay. to know him first, right? Like, yeah, I don't like one night stands. I'm somebody like, if I sleep with you once, I want to sleep with you again. You right, right, I mean? right. So, so you'll take that time to like get to know him yeah. before you even sit, like lay down with him. But the biggest thing guys don't do. Okay, here we go. Is they don't, they don't listen. Ah. They don't listen. They don't fucking listen. Yeah. When I'm out with a girl I'm dating and she's like, oh my God, that's so cute. You know what I do next thing? She turns away. I put it in my fucking notes. You write it down. I write it down. Right. I'm like, she's like, oh, like, I love that color. I'm like, boom, mm. got it. Ah, like, yeah, she sees something. That's a good little trick right she, there. She, I appreciate that one. Yeah. That's a good so, one. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm going to start, right, start doing it. We're watching a reality TV show together. She goes, oh my gosh, I love, I love that bathing suit. Boom. Right. I'm like, where did, where did that girl get her bathing suit? Oh my God, suit? I love pepperonis. So I become very, I, I'm a gift I, I, giver. I love giving gifts, but also love surprising people. So I'm like, right. I'm listening. I'm becoming close to their friends. Like not in like a red flag type of way, just like yeah. Valentine's Day. You know what I mean? Like uh, there, you know, if there's somebody I'm interested in, like I'm going to make sure I find a way to like, do something special for you without you knowing. 
And mm. if you do know, I want you to be a little curious. But you also can't give those hints and then not fucking do something because then they're like, that was, that's disappointing, right. right? And also, yeah. don't be talking to your friends, like your girls' girlfriends. Girls' girlfriends. Yeah. See, I got you're going to get fucked. I got a problem with that. You got a problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Nah. nah um, I don't. I don't really. And, you know, it's if you do talk to your girlfriend's girlfriends, make sure your girlfriend knows you were talking to them. <laughs> Right, you gotta let like, it know. Not like you gotta be transparent. Like, yeah. Be and, transparent. Exactly. So, yeah. But communication and listen. The more you can close your fucking mouth and you can listen to what they're saying and listen to what their body wants, mm. you'll be better, right? Like, it, and that's how I am now. Like, when I'm having, like, you know, if I'm having any type of intercourse with somebody I'm dating, then it's like I, ri- I listen and read their body language, right? right. If you like that, you can tell, like, uh, like you, can, you can tell if you pay attention. In the For details. sure, it's so, all in the details, yeah. man. Um, and then okay, so love, love is blind happens. You know, you go to, uh, you say yeah, no at the altar. <laughs> yeah, no. And then, um, and then a new show comes out afterwards called Love Is Blind After the Altar. Yeah. And um, that you got a lot of flack for because that I think that you got a lot of flack for that because uh, you brought that turned everything you brought Fran, Francesca from too hot to handle yeah on this show explain explain what happened right there because because in the new show she's you know they show those clips yeah 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 that was fucked <laughs> yeah. um yeah so that was a uh, so a uh, previous uh, me and Francesca had the same management right mm-hmm. um and we were out in LA with a bunch of friends mm-hmm. anyways we're walking out of this restaurant and there's paparazzi pops out right and she had already said they were probably out there. And I was like, nah, it's crazy. Like, paparazzi isn't going to chase us. But, I mean, I, you know, obviously they were, they were like, Francesca's there, of course. They're mm-hmm. there. So um, they come out. And, I mean, there's some big guys. I mean, I'm six foot three, 220 pounds, you know. So these guys are, like, six foot four, like, right. 260 pounds. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And they're, like, boof, boof, boof. And mm-hmm. they're hitting me with all this stuff. And she's like, she's like, please just get me in the car, blah, blah, blah. Turns her head. But the way the cameras catch it and paparazzi looks like we were holding hands. Right. And that got all over social media the next day. Damien from Love is Blind goes in and yeah. in the pictures it looked like me and Francesca were holding hands. Mm-hmm. Articles go everywhere. I called Jeannie and I was like, hey, this is what happened. I had an anxiety attack. Mm-hmm. Released a statement saying we're just friends. We have the same management, blah, blah, blah. But if you zoom into the picture, you can see it's blurry. We're not actually holding hands. It's crossing. Oh, our a little hands, CGI. Our hands are crossing like they're holding hands, but they're not. We're near each other. So, uh, yeah, so they just caught you at the right time, and then, damn, paparazzi knows walk what in, they're doing. Walk into the, walk just into like the your hands are just, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just, that, that's, like this, boom, and it looks like they're crossed. Yeah, that's crazy. So, so. Well, listen, man, I appreciate you um, stopping by and talking with me. Um, I guess you could tell people where they can follow you at. I hate doing that. I don't want to do that, actually. I don't want to do that. Now, you can follow me <laughs> on Instagram at, at Damien underscore underscore Powers. Underscore, underscore powers. Or you can type in Damien Powers, and it'll pop up somewhere in there. But, All right, man. Well, uh, but I, w- I will say this, too. Um, it's been great coming on here. So. Hey, I appreciate you, brother. Let's go get some drinks. Let's go get four drinks. <laughs>